Hey, good morning. This is, thank you for coming to my Teddy Talk. I don't know if you're familiar with Teddy Talks, it's a pretty exclusive thing. Uh, and I was just honored to be invited to do a Teddy Talk today. So today I'm gonna talk about a new way to program. So this is a 10 minute video. We're starting here at uh, 5.41, 5.42 a.m. Hawaii time. We're actually gonna make it nine minutes. So we're gonna, we're gonna end at uh, 5, 51 a.m. when I see that that hits we're gonna call it a day so aloha everyone thank you again for coming to my Teddy talk and you can the notes for this talk are available on scroll.pub if you go to the blog and then you click on a new way to program Teddy talk and here we are particle notation scroll in a parsers programming so we're gonna, gonna see the videos here, but for now, um, here's the outline. We're, so we're gonna cover five questions today. So about two minutes a question. And, and that's it. And we'll get you on your way. So first, is this relevant to you? You know, a new way to program, particle notation, scroll, parsers, is this relevant to you in your life? Is this worth 10 minutes of your time? Well, I think if you are an experienced programmer, if you're an aspiring programmer, if you're a casual programmer, maybe you do a little spreadsheets at work, you might find this interesting. Maybe you make some memes, you might find this interesting. If you really don't like programming, if you don't like computers, if you don't like to write, this is probably not for you. You just, I mean, maybe you could, you could give a ride, but I don't wanna waste your time. So if you're a thinker, if you're a writer, if you're a builder, if you like to build things with your hands, like to take things apart, understand how they work, build new things, I think you'll really like this. Um, and also, this is all kind of new. It's taken a long time to get to this point and figure it out. So if you don't like it now, or if you don't like listening to this guy with a beard who looks like he hasn't showered or shaved in a long time, that's totally fine. I won't be offended. I'm sure um, better teachers will come along who can explain this in a better way. So anyway, so is this stuff relevant to, to you today? If you're in those categories, I think it is, but you can always wait. You'll, you'll learn more, but you'll hear it. You'll start seeing this stuff a lot more out there. So you can be an early adopter. You can wait till it becomes more mainstream and, and that might be a better use of your time unless you, unless you enjoy being in the early adopting process. All right, what is particle notation? Um, and particle notation is, sorry, let me just do some times here. Okay. The one-liner, particle notation, it's a syntax-free syntax. There's no visible syntax. There's only three syntax characters. There's the space, there's the new line, and then there's the space again. So it's a syntax-free syntax for splitting files into particles separated by line breaks, which can have words separated by spaces and subparticles and dented lines. So you can, you can, we've got a little marketing site that we built a few years ago um, to kind of like give you kind of a playful exploration of the idea. Um, there's also this playground here. And we've got this lead sheet. A lead sheet is just a one page cheat sheet. That's, that's, it. that's it, that's what a lead sheet is. It's just, because I don't like the term cheat sheet because it sounds kind of derogatory. Lead sheets are great. We should have a great term for a great notion. One page, all the information you need. This one just started, so there'll be a little more information later. So here's the sandbox. So um, this is what particle notation is. I could say name brec, okay? So, and then I can say um, city Honolulu. I'm in Honolulu at the moment. So we've got two particles here. We have, and the, this one line is one particle, and this uh, second line is a second particle. And, um, you know, you could also actually say we, have th we really have three particles because these are both child particles of kind of the document, right, or the file. So um, now we can watch this. If we indent this line by one space, now this particle is a, you could call it a subparticle of this particle, or you could just call it child particle. Um, still two particles. And we also break each um, particle into words. So 
this particle has three words, and you just break them with spaces, its name, breath, needs. Okay, so that's particle notation, very simple. Um, you can see what it really allows some cool stuff, like for example, here each dot is what represents a, a word, so each line is a particle, um, and we have two, these are, this is real code actually, I, I forget what, I have it somewhere, what, what program this actually is, but this is a program on the left and this program on the right, they do the exact same thing, you can see immediately that this program on the left here is uh, simpler. So, so particle notation is fantastic for allowing you to measure the complexity of a program. And that's important because then we can, we can identify, we can use all sorts of optimization tricks to find simpler programs. And that's really powered a lot of what, what we're gonna show you today. All right, so that's particle notation, very simple. What is scroll? Scroll is a language for scientists of all ages where you write and combine particles, written in particle notation, to evolve and publish your most intelligent ideas to HTML, PDFs, CSVs, JSON files, movie files, audio files, slideshows, charts, books, you name it, scroll can build it, or will be able to build it as we go forward out of particles. So, um, so and we can see this playground here with scroll. Um, you know, so I can type, so look, I'm writing, particle notation, just particles and, and spaces. Hello world, uh, my name is Breck. Um, and we can do, you know, it's if you're familiar with Markdown, it's very similar to Markdown, very similar. But wait, you know, Markdown doesn't have, <laughs> doesn't have all this stuff, so what's going on? What, how are we doing data viz? You know, like, let me, table let me show you what's in this table here so this is a table of all the elements let's um, where oops let's select the uh, elements where um, atomic number is less than 10 how about do, 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 do. and let me hide this um, oops yeah and now you know, so Markdown's not doing this, right? So how, where does where does Scroll get its power from? Okay, it's parsers. Oh, and I, sh I sh should show you one more thing about Scroll. There's also a command line tool you can use um, with Scroll. So for example, this blog post we're reading now, we're looking at now, um, uh, Teddy Talk. You know, um, hi. This is written in scroll, and if I were to scroll build, um, and then I open, you can see this. So that's that's scroll. It's a command line tool, and and um, now let's get to the the big thing. We've got two minutes left in this ten minute version. Parsers. So now parsers is a programming language where programmers write parsers in particle notation, which consume particles also in particle notation, uh, and they contain logic for translating those particles into actions on computing machines. So if you're writing parsers, you are a programmer, you understand the machine that you're programming against, and it doesn't have to be hardware, it could be a virtual machine such as JavaScript, um, or Python, or Ruby, or REST, whatever. It could be, um, but basically, you're writing the parsers as the glue that, com that takes particle notation and scroll and, and, and combines it with all of our great amazing machines. So um, if we looked at the lead sheet for for scroll, we'll see that it's got you know over a hundred parsers. So these are all written in, in parsers. Parsers itself is also written in parsers, has about 30 parsers. And so um, you basically have parser definition parsers and then you have cell definition parsers. Um, so this is parses the advanced stuff, and you can see the vibe, and that's basically just a lot of sample code of all these different parsers. So for example, the tables that we just took a look at, um, okay, we're about to run out of time, but the, here's the table. So you'll see that a lot of it is in particle notation, and then we have some JavaScript code stuck in there. Um, and that's because, so parsers will always contain um, stuff to Basic parsers acquire particles, they analyze those particles, and then they act on those particles. And to act on those particles, they, um, you know, they need to contain code 
at the moment, I mean, in the future, we'll have machines that just run particle notation directly. Right? Um, but until we get to that point, we do need to have these languages, these intermediate languages that translate particles into um, machine code. So that's it. That's the 10 minute Teddy talk. Thank you for coming. Check out how to get started. Check out Scroll Hub. Look at this. You can build a website. Hi, Mon. You can build a website in one second. This will be live on the web. You've got your own website running scroll and you can edit it live and, and test everything without downloading anything. Or join the subreddit. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, that's it. Have a great day. Cheers.